Every time our athletes walk into this weight room, they're going to be pushed to the max. Let's go! Let's go! The barbell hasn't changed in over 100 years. I can take a 25-pound plate, and we'll go out on the turf, and I'll, I'll have you hating life. We talk about straining your gut, pushing past that comfort level. I want a lot of energy. What better breeding ground is there for being a success in life than the weight room? Hey guys, welcome back to Iron Game Chalk Talk. I'm your host, Ron McKeefrey, and this is episode number 202. I want to thank each of you for listening each week. I really appreciate those of you that help share the podcast on social media by leaving a rating review on iTunes or with your different social media accounts. Doing so helps me help as many coaches as possible. I also want to thank our sponsors, specifically Iron Grip, for sponsoring this episode and for each of them helping bring these episodes to you for free. I only partner with companies that I believe in, and, um, and Iron Grip is definitely one of those companies. If you're in the market for plates, bars, and dumbbells, I think they do a fantastic job. I've put them in three different facilities that I've put together, including my own garage where my family and I train, and I uh, just think the world of them. they got new fat handle grips out now for dumbbells that I think are fantastic, so if you're in the market for those, I'd encourage you to, to uh, reach out to them. This week, I'm joined by Tiffany Bird. Tiffany is the Director of Sports Nutrition at Oklahoma. Uh, she has, she was a national champion gymnast. She's had stops at Oregon, Alabama, Baylor, uh, Murray state was in there somewhere. I actually interviewed at Murray state several years ago and, uh, just doing fantastic things there at Oklahoma. So Tiffany, I appreciate you coming on the show. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Tiffany, uh, you know, there, which is with anything with, with whatever career you choose to do, there's, there's always a reason why, you know, what's, what's the, what's the why, why do you do sports nutrition? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, you kind of touched on it that I was a a gymnast before. And so, you know, being a gymnast, you know, obviously what you eat um, really plays a a role, a a large role. You're judged basically on how you look. So um, what you eat really plays a a huge role and the skills that we're asked to do. You know, you have to be strong, but you have to be lean. And so um, I, I was very interested in it from that aspect. But ironically, I told myself I was never going to do that had kind of, you know, uh, a love hate relationship with food. I love to eat, but it didn't necessarily do great things for the way I looked. So, um, you know, I didn't necessarily uh, like it that way. But, um, you know, going going through college, I actually had um, at Nebraska where I ended up graduating undergrad. um, I had a phenomenal uh, director of sports nutrition named James Harris. And he was, you know, obviously the director at um, Nebraska, but then he went on to Oregon and followed Chip Kelly to the Eagles. And now he's actually um, with the Pirates. And so he's kind of um, just, he was a huge, uh, imp- made a huge impact on my life um, and how I saw that he cared for me more than just what I could put up on the gymnastics floor, whether I could get the perfect 10 or the 995 or be the best one on the team. He didn't care. It was, how am I? How, how's my body? How's, you know, what, what can I do? What could he do to make me the best version of me that I could be? And that just really, you know, hit home with me. And so that's my why I do this for the athletes. And the second that it becomes not fun and it actually becomes a job and I don't care necessarily about um, who I am investing in, then I'll walk away because if I cannot put everything that I have into all that I do for these athletes, they deserve the best. And, um, then, um, you know, that's why I do it for them. Absolutely. Well, you mentioned that you had kind of a love hate relationship with food and then, you, you know, you go to Nebraska. I think you started at Alabama, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, and, and you go there and, you know, you still have that same love hate relationship, but now all of a sudden you have this the nutritionist and obviously he had built a relationship with you, but was there something specific that he did that just made it all click for you? Um, he just really put it down on my level. It was no longer about, you know, you need to have this many grams of carbohydrates and this many grams of protein. And Tiffany, you're a stockier gymnast, so you need to, you know, lose weight in order to do this. And it wasn't about the number on the scale or anything like that. It was, Tiffany, how are you feeling? You know, are you performing well? Then who cares about the rest? You know, like, how do you personally feel doing gymnastics? How do you feel about your body? You know, are you able to do your skills? Then who cares what you weigh? You know, yes, we want you to put the right foods in your body because that's ultimately what's going to be best. But it wasn't he wasn't the food police. You know, he understood that we were in college, you know, and that we were, um, you know, uh, type A personality OCD. That's very common with gymnasts is actually very common with dietitians. Sure. And 
Um, so, you know, I, I didn't need somebody else to beat me up uh, because I was already going to be the number one person that was the hardest on me. And um, so somebody who just came along was my advocate and, and carried me with, you know, carried along, walked alongside me on the journey. And that's really what he was. He was another coach, but more an advocate instead of like a disciplinarian. And that was, it was just, it was awesome. He had an incredible impact. I still talk to him to this day. Oh, that's fantastic. That's what it's all about, right? Making an impact in young people's lives Absolutely. for sure. You said you had stops at, at you know, uh, Oregon and Alabama. It sounds like you followed James a little bit to Oregon there, right? And that, you know, and then Alabama and Baylor, Murray State was in there, now Oklahoma, which I usually ask the journey question where you take me through all that. But what I'd like to do is dig a little bit deeper and to find and which one of those experiences really kind of shaped you as a coach and, and, and what was it about that experience that did that? Yeah. Well, each stop has a different, you know, kind of goal. When I went to Oregon, it's actually a, kind of a funny story because, you know, James was at Oregon and I was calling for advice. I had to do an internship, a practicum in school. And so I called him and I'm like, hey, do you have any, you know, contacts? I think I want to do what you do, but I don't really know what that means. And finally, everything was kind of falling through. And he's like, well, why don't you come to Oregon? I don't think he thought I was for real. And so I hung up the phone and I told my boyfriend at the time, I was like, hey, listen, I need an apartment in Oregon. I need a flight there, a one way flight there on this date. Hurry up before he changes his mind. <laughs> and I called him back in 20 minutes and I was like, hey, James, I got a flight. I got a one way ticket. I got an apartment for 10 weeks. Are you you're for sure? Right. Because I just put like two thousand dollars down. Will you please take me? And he was like, "Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I ended up at Oregon, you know, and. It was, it really stretched me there, you know, cause I, what you think sports nutrition is and then actually doing it is, is totally different, you know? Agreed. And, um, so it really stretched me, but I learned that that is exactly what I wanted to do. So when I went back to grad school at Alabama, um, there was no turning back. I was 100% going to do sports nutrition and I was going to be a sports dietitian. So Oregon really kind of showed me what, what it was I thought I wanted to do. Then Alabama, I would say, really molded me into that. You know, my, my mentor there was um, Amy Bragg, and she's, I know you know, Amy well. Yeah. I mean, she's she's amazing. She is somebody that I would definitely aspire to be like. She is um, intimidating. She's fierce. She's relentless. But she's also, you know, she's a woman in the field. She's well-respected. And, um, you know, she, she is very passionate for the field, for um, her family, for um, athletics and for our sports dietitians and getting, you know, that field out there. And so I just, um, I was very fortunate to get connected with her. Um, and how that worked is I came back from Oregon and, um, Alabama had hired her first time, you know, um, for Alabama to have that position. And I called her and she was so busy and I literally had an interview set up six different times and she canceled on me. And on the seventh one, I was like, I'm going to find this woman if she exists. Like, I, I have got to get to her. And I saw her and I was like, please, like, I'm Tiffany. Can I can I just like sit in your office? Like, let me be by you. And um, she was like, yeah, you're hired. Come in. Um, just follow me. And, I, <laughs> and so, I mean, I just I hung on to her as if she was like liquid gold. And um, she that that year and a half again was. Very, I was unpaid. Oregon, I was unpaid. I actually paid to go to Oregon. I was in grad school. I was unpaid for Alabama. But I got to see her build that program from scratch under Coach Saban. And um, that was invaluable. It was worth way more than she ever could have paid me. Sure, sure. Well, I think so many times, I mean, something that, that stood out to me in that story is that when you are, you know, I always talk about how I think if you're not having been an athlete, it's hard to be a great strength coach, but great nutritionist because you don't really fully understand the challenges that athletics face, you know, or athletes face. And, you know, at the same time, though, the flip side of that is, is that your coaches, the people that are going to help you the most, you know, and they will because they care about you as a person, you know, but, but they've also seen all the fleas and they've seen the, the, the maturation process where sometimes it's hard to get in because, and they, for the, for them to fully believe in you, in that role because, you know, they remember the freshman Tiffany or the freshman Ron McKeefrey and, and that wasn't always the person that we wanted to portray as a professional, you know, and I, I think you're right. I think that, you know, showing a level of commitment and, and, um, on the front end and, and a sacrifice, uh, starts to put it in a way that 
uh, people can respect you in that way. And, and obviously you did that at Oregon and it led to great things. There in Oklahoma, you're, you're, you know, you've taken on a program that's historically been one of the top, you know, and continues to be so. And, and you come in and, and build in the program there. And, and what, what do you, what are you, would you say are the biggest challenges that you face, um, you know, really just a, a, with, with athletes in general and, and sports nutrition? Yeah, well, I mean, coming to Oklahoma was, um, I didn't necessarily know what I was getting myself into. You know, I was at Baylor and I started Baylor's program and learned a ton there. And then, you know, I, I came to Oklahoma and um, it was one of the biggest challenges was I knew what I needed. And I thought since they were hiring the position that they knew what I would need. Great. And the, the fact of the matter is they didn't. They just wanted the position. And then I had to educate everyone. Like, I thought I was coming in and I was just going to educate the athletes on how they needed to eat and the right timing and the right foods and the quality and quantity and all that with um, to enhance their performance. And obviously, like you said, Oklahoma wins. You know, probably they won before I got here. They're going to win after I'm gone. You know, it's, it's not like I'm bringing in the, the trophy or anything with me, you know. But I, but I, you know, was a part of the process and am a part of the process. But, um, but that was probably one of the, the biggest challenges for me is that, it was now my job to educate administration why they needed to give half a million dollars that first year for nutrition. And now the deregulation has hit one point five million dollars. You know, that's that's a lot of money that they did not have at, you know, they were putting in other places. Right. And so, all of a sudden, you know, this this uh, short little firecracker girl comes into and is like, hey, give me this money because you hired me to do this job. And this is what it's going to take. And, and they're like, wait, wait, wait wait a minute, like, no, we want, want you to, yep, this is what the dietitian does. And we were prepared for that. Well, you brought me here, so we're going to get prepared for that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, that's, that's uh, it, it takes me a little bit different direction, but what were some of the things that you did with the administration then to, you know, it's just because it's much like a strength coach going into a situation and saying, okay, I need, I need equipment. I need, you know, this, I need space. I need all these different things. How are you able to go and justify you know, spending 1.5 million when you're right, they've allocated. And it's not like it's, it maybe was going, it's not like they were wasting 1.5 somewhere else that was going to other places that needed it as well. Now all of a sudden you're taking that money. You know, how are you able to justify that? Yeah. Well, my first year that I was here, um, it was before deregulation where they allowed you basically to have unlimited snacks and all of that. So that was when our budget was, you know, half a million. And how, how did I get that? I mean, they, I came in and they're like, okay, your budget's 90,000. And I said, I'm going to spend half a million. And they're like, well, your budget's 90,000. And I said, well, I'm going to spend half a million. And coach Dukes was behind me and he's like, give her what she needs. And so I, I knew what it was going to take having had that experience at Bama and knew what her budget was to run a top level you know, football program. And that was honestly my first year that I got here. That was my focus. Right. You know, I wanted to get recovery options in every single facility for all of our athletes, but I was pushing the hardest for the football program because I knew if I could turn that one around and make the biggest impact there, that it would fizzle over into all the other sports, which is exactly what happened. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, specifically then going back to athletes, I mean, you know, and one of the, I mean, I've, I've, I've hired nutritionists multiple different places. I've worked with, you know, mo- many of the same friends we have, Amy and Dave Ellis and on and on and on. Um, you know, what, what I've, my experience is, you know, I've had a lot of clinical nutritionists that have tried to be sports nutritionists and there's a difference, you know, um, you know, and in our environment, I mean, the guys, they're going to go to McDonald's, they're going to, they're going to go to get a pizza, you know, they're going to drink beer on a weekend sometimes, you know, um, those are things that you can't always eliminate. You know, what were, what are the, what have been the biggest challenges for you to get those guys that, that are used to eating? Maybe they're coming from, you know, broken homes where they, they grew up on McDonald's every single day. And that's just their, what their palate is. How have you been able to get them down the right track? Yeah. I mean, that, that's a great question, you know, and, and it's a challenge because you've got, here at Oklahoma, we've got 21 sports, over 600 athletes, and one of me. And we've got a program of 120, but then you also have wrestling and women's gymnastics and men's gymnastics, you know, so a, a large variety of people. But, you know, I, I come at them where they are. I meet them where they are. I don't expect them to take time out of their busy lives and their schedule to come and sit in my office. 
I go to where they are. I go to their practice facilities. I go to their weight room. I go to their training room, you know, and I meet them there and, you know, and, and just talk with them. I eat with them in the dining hall. So then I just become part of them. And so then sure enough, guard comes down, you know, cause food's very personal and yeah. automatically, you know, the gymnasts see me and they're like, Oh my gosh, she's going to call my coach because I had mashed potatoes. Like, I don't care. Right. Okay. If you believe that's what is going to be best for you, they're all adults. And if at the end of the day, they believe that's what's going to be best for them to perform, then, you know, it, it's their choice. I can educate them, but they have to make those choices, you know? So I, I'm real with them. I know they're going to go out. I know, like you said, they're going to eat McDonald's and eat fast food and all that. So I educate them on ways to make the right choices at those places. But then I also am realistic with those choices and that they're not going to be perfect. So I tell them we're shooting for progress, not perfection. Sure, sure. For each person, that progress is going to be different, you know. For our gymnasts, you know, they're, they walk a fine line. You know, they're probably not out eating McDonald's frequently, whereas football or basketball, that's what they grow up on. Right. You know, it's easy. It's right there. They've got that. So, so that's what they grow up on. So if I can wean football off of, you know, eating McDonald's three times a day, every single day, and get them to start buying in and making good plates. And, oh, here's grilled chicken. Oh, this is a vegetable, you know. <laughs> here's some recovery smoothies. This is the timing that we want you to have this kind of stuff. Right, right. At the end of the day, we attack it from recruiting. So I'm involved with recruiting in our, in our sports and with football. And they call me either Coach T or Mama T. And so at recruiting, I get the parents and I get the athletes. And the players, you know, they're kind of like, whatever, talk to my mom. And the mom's like, yep, you're going to listen to whatever she says. Right. You know, so, so they know when they come here that nutrition and mama tea is ingrained in our culture. It's part of our OU DNA is what we say. That's sweet. And so, so they know that already coming in. Now, oh, yep, she's going to make me eat greens. Yep, I am. <laughs> well, what would you say, you know, and again, I mean, I know this is a loaded question, you know, and there's not one great answer, but, you know, working with, say, a football team, Mm -hmm. and addressing them for the, the, the first time and the challenges that come with an eclectic 100-plus person group. Um, if you were going to make one change, if you were going to say, do this one thing nutritionally to make the biggest impact, what would that be? Well, I guess when I first got here, I had three goals. The first one was breakfast, but you know we already kind of had that in place. So the one that I feel like makes one of the one of the biggest changes is – getting them to do um, recovery nutrition within trying to put back in some of that fuel. And so we've set up recovery stations at every single facility, combining, you know, both uh, carbohydrates and protein, um, having higher calorie, lower calorie, you know, whole foods, shake, uh, peanut butter, banana, hydration, antioxidants, things like that, making sure that they've got that selection um, available for them, whether it's a football team or um, basketball or gymnastics, they all have their specific needs there um, for them to be able to get right in their facility so they don't have to go far from, for it. Mm. It's right, widely available for them in every one of our sports. What, what would your recommendations be for like the Murray States of the world where maybe they still don't have a nutritionist at this point, you know, that, that are just trying to find a way to, to do do right by their athletes in some ways, shape or form. What, what are some recommendations you have for those types of schools? Yeah, absolutely. You know, a lot of schools don't have the kinds of resources and money and that's okay. Every school has some type of a dining hall um, or, you know, in college, there's a dining hall. So team up with the dining hall and see what, you know, if you can order milk from them or if you can get some of their fruit or whatever and see, because most of the time they're paying, you know, they're not paying retail, they're paying wholesale or they're getting, you know, by the bulk. And so they can get a lot cheaper prices for high school kids. Go with the parents. A lot of times those parents or the booster clubs are the ones that are providing those halftime snacks, those post-practice snacks. So get them to do, bring, you know, the Gatorade or the water or um, pickles for, you know, cramping or doing PB&Js that's so cheap to make or Rice Krispies or fruit snacks or cut up some bananas and some oranges and get those for the kids, some trail mix, you know, pretzels, things like that for the kids to make sure that they're getting those. And, you know, parents... Parents always are looking to do things, and a lot of times they feed their kids or or um, put money together to, to get uh, the kids something at the game. So why not try and, and get the parents the right 
knowledge to um, make the right choices for their athletes because they want the right things for their kids. They just don't know. No, I agree. I agree. Where do you where do you see the the profession going? I mean, obviously, it's it's you know following the lines of athletic training and strength and conditioning in terms of trying to get their seat at the table and resources and all that. Where do you see it growing in the next ten years? Yeah, I mean that's exactly where where I see it going. I don't. I mean, my hope is that we'll get to where you know the main sports the at a school has their own dietitian. Because, you know, you really need that person in order to have the most impact on the athletes. That person's got to be there. They've got to be available, you know, and and they've got to be around the athletes at all times. Um, And so having enough dietitians, you know, some of some of the top schools here with the top programs, they've got six people, six full time. Plus, they've got GAs. Plus, they've got, you know, 20 plus interns that are paid. And not every school's there. There's a handful. Right. you know, and, and the rest of us are, are trying to get there, you know, and utilizing what we have. But that that's where I see it going because it, it is such a need. And a lot of times we are kind of tagging up with operations because most most schools have operations for most of their sports. Well, the dietitian is doing most of the operations yeah. now when it comes to food and ordering food and talking with the chefs and, you know, traveling and actually getting the food and making sure it's correct and doing individual orders and, oh, this kid's sick. What can we get this kid so that they're, you know, adequately hydrated and have enough carbohydrates and, you know, they can heal quickly. Or this kid had surgery. What can we do for them to get them back quicker um, and in time for season without, you know, having to all of a sudden put on muscle and shed fat that they gained because they were injured. Sure, sure. Well, Tiffany, we end the show with some, some resources. What would you say was the best piece of advice that any of your mentors gave you when relating to the kids? Yeah. Well, I think one of the one of the best is that um, the the common cliche quote is people don't um, care how much you know until they know how much you care. And that is absolutely true when uh, in my job, you know, the, these athletes, uh, my football team, like they know I love them. They know that I care about them. And when I come down on them, it's because I have such high expectations for them. Uh, and and any time that they deviate or they fail to hold themselves to that same standard, I, I let them know, hey, man, you know, like I'm here for you. And, and you told me you want this goal. You want to do this. Well, you know, that that choice right there is is not you know, showing me that. So, you know, uh, you let me know if your goals have changed or, uh, and and I'll reevaluate myself and my standard for you. But um, if you still want this goal and like you told me, then you're going to have to live it out because I will hold you to that. That's great. Give us a, a book app website recommendation. Yeah. So um, some books, we do a lot of reading. Um, So basic nutrition books that we um, have are, a lot of our interns and stuff, we do the sports nutrition guidebook uh, by Nancy Clark. She's kind of like the the guru for sports nutrition. Yeah. So uh, we for sure do that one. Um, we do the Nutrition Edge. Uh, Susan Kundra, um edited that. She's also a, another, you know, like mother of sports nutrition. And um, it's got a whole bunch of different uh, sports dietitians writing a lot of articles like on hydration, on camp, on um, carbohydrates, fueling and after exercise, fueling during exercise, anything like that. So um, it's a collaboration from a lot of different dietitians. So that's a, a really, really good resource. Um, anything for eating disorders, um, we've got eating disorders and sport, and that's um, a good one by uh, uh, Roberta and or Ron Sherman and Roberta. Um, they've done a great job when it comes to uh, they're kind of like the gurus for the eating disorders. Um, Leslie Bonchi has a book, Sports Nutrition for Coaches. Um, she's done a great job. Um, if you're specifically looking at um, football, Lisa Dorfman has a performance nutrition for football. And I give that to everybody, even though not everybody is um, into football, but it kind of shows you the different programming that happens in football, whether it's in season, out of season, camp, bowl, um, that kind of thing. And then you can tailor that to your sport because every sport has multiple seasons. It's yeah. not just an in season and an out of season. Right. And- it kind of gives you a little bit more of um, a picture just utilizing the large sport of football. Where where can people stay up with you uh, and be able to reach out to you for more information? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm I'm pretty active on Twitter. So uh, my Twitter is um, at Tiffany A. Bird. 
Um, and so I'm pretty good with Twitter. I have Instagram. I wouldn't say that I'm super active on that. Uh, Facebook is all for like my family and my school friends. So um, I'm not active on that from a, you know, colleague level or anything. Um, my email, I mean, people can email if, if me, email me if they would like. Um, it's tabird at um, ou.edu if they uh, would like to do that. Um, That's of course, uh, any websites for uh, resources um, I mean, at OU, Soonersports.com, but that's not just nutrition. You know, that's right. obviously uh, my athletes and all the awesome things that they are able to accomplish because they're pretty phenomenal. Um, but uh, for for nutrition, uh, need just look at uh, the Collegiate and Professional Sports Dietetics Association. Um, so that's www.sportsrd.org. Um, I mean, they, they tell you where all the full-time dietitians are, what um, – they have resources, um, infographics, PDFs they, um, on main topics, but also for different sports. Um, so they really do a great job. There's all types of internships and GA positions and um, jobs are really posted there. And they just really do a phenomenal job at getting the, the um, information out and the right information out. And then, um, of course, our governing body, um, Academy of Nutrition and D Dietetics, which is um, www.eatright.org. Well, those are all great. I appreciate that. Well, Tiffany, I know you, you got to get back to work, but we really appreciate you coming on and sharing. And, I, you know, it's one of those jobs that um, much like strength and conditioning is and, tra and athletic training is, is sometimes it's a thankless job because it's just nonstop. And um, it, it is a, it's very much a challenge to change culture and change personality and change habits. But um, but obviously, you, you know, for you, the same reason why it was an impactful to you as an athlete is is why you're being such a success now and uh, pouring into the athletes and keeping them first and keeping them front and center and, and what their goals are. And, and so obviously that, that, that rings true uh, all the way through. So appreciate you coming on the show and sharing. Thanks so much. I thank you. That's it for this episode of Iron Game Chalk Talk. Thanks to this week's guest as well as our sponsors for bringing this episode to you for free. Make sure to check out ronmckeefree.com where you can join our mailing list, find the show notes, including all the links and resources mentioned, and information about Coach McKeefree's other products. While you are there, please join Coach McKeefree in the comments section thanking our guest for sharing. If you haven't subscribed to Iron Game Chalk Talk on YouTube or iTunes yet, make sure to do so. Comments, ratings, and reviews are always welcome. Coach McKeefree can be found on Twitter at rmckeefree on Facebook and YouTube at forward slash Ron dot McKeefer. That's it for this week. Be sure to check back next week for another great episode of Iron Game Chalk Talk.